Hi everyone, George here from Locked On Art, and in this video I'm going to be starting to build the US Marine Corps AH1Z Shark Mouth from Academy Models. Now this kit is in 1 to 35th scale, and on the side there it has some product photos of the finished model, and on the other side there's a painting index, and there's nothing on the bottom so we'll open it up and check out what's inside. Now I've gone ahead and bought some aftermarket accessories and we'll go over those in just a moment. Now first off we come across the very large decal sheet. It has the monitors there in the corner. And this is the shark mouth version so it has the decals for that. There's some unit markings, a couple of different colours for the US Marines and all of the warnings and caution labels. Very clear, they're all readable. We have a lot of decals there for the missiles. And there are a couple of uh, instruction manuals in here. The first one is the building manual. The second one is for the decals. And it has some very nice large colour images of the paint scheme. There's a few different options there. So the first of the sprues is the clear parts. Now the canopy is very nice and clear. These two here are identical. So we have the rotor, main rotor blades and the missiles and the engine exhausts. This next sprue is the tail end. It's got the main body of the engine, the wings there that the missiles attach to. So the last couple of sprues are the main body and the cockpit. See, as you can see there, there's a lot of fine detail on there. Nice panel lines, the rivets are all nice and crisp. So there, there's the main cockpit well, and all of the instrument panels for the two cockpits. They're both basically identical. So as I said before, I've bought some aftermarket kits. The first one is this brass turned Gatling cannon. I've also bought a set of seat belts for the cockpit, just to give it that added bit of realism. And finally, what I'm most excited about is a set of monitors and control panels. These are also pre-painted and coated in resin. And also included in that kit was a sheet of photo etch, a lot more of those finer details. So I'm going to be starting off with the cockpit first, and what I need to do is prepare all of the parts for the photo etch. So with the Eddard detailing set, everything here in red has to be removed to be able to fit the photo etch on. Now some parts are quite tricky to get out, like these foot pedals here. So I'm just going to use the nippers to take off as much as I can and then file the rest down.
I'm just making some indents here on the back side of the panel. And when I flip it over, it'll have the raised portions there on the top. Now before I carry on with the photo etch, there's quite a lot of scratch building that I would like to add to the cockpit. Firstly, I would like to add some fabric texture to the seat covers here. I'm just going to be using Tamiya's Quick Type Epoxy. This comes in two parts and it just has to be kneaded together. Now I'm going to apply this directly to the seat. I'm just going to add a wee cut out now for where the seat belts go. Now, as for the actual texture on the fabric, I'm using a wee photo etch grill here as a stencil. So now that both of the chair backs are done, I'm going to let this cure overnight and then I can work on the headrests. The edges of the seats flared out a little bit and I'm going to add that in using some copper sheet.
So what I'm going to do with the cockpit is I'm going to add all of the main structures in and then that will let me work in all the finer details like all the wires and tubing. Now these two panels here with the mission grips on them, I want to work on those separately so I'm just going to take those off. And this panel next to the gunner is actually textured, so I'm going to remove those moulded parts and add some texture to that. It is a rounded piece down here that some corrugated tube attaches onto and I'm just going to be using this piece I found in my spares. I'm just going to cut it to shape. Now I feel that this piece here is a little bit too far forward so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim that back a wee bit to about there. Now there's quite a few electrical boxes and panels along the back here near the pilot that have been missed out on this model. For the bulk of it I'm just going to be using some of this foam brick here and then adding the panels with some styrene or brass sheet. And I feel this box is sitting a bit high. I want it to come to about here. So I'm just going to remove that top portion with a saw.
There's a couple of electrical boxes that sit up here in a bracket. I'm just going to make that bracket now out of some spare photo etch. And the electrical boxes that are going in the bracket. And these are the connections for the cables. For the mission grips power supply, the bracket here on the back was made of a sheet metal and then bent into shape. So it was actually hollow in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make one out of brass sheet. So you can see a slight improvement there on the original. For the air duct tubing that goes from this port here up and over and down behind the seat, I'm going to be making that out of putty rolled into tubes. And I've made this wee tool here just to give it that corrugated look. Now I'll leave those sections to firm up a little bit and then I can shape them. So what I'm going to do with these bits is I'm going to cut them and pin them to the model as I go. And then I can take the whole piece off and work on the straps. And for the straps themselves, I'm using some strips of foil that I've cut to size. There's a couple of connection tubes either side of the seat here that I'm just going to make up now. And I've made some right angled tubing, just cutting some sprue on a 45 degree angle. And I'm just using some spare parts just to make up the tubing.
Just adding on the mission brakes power supply now. And also the cable that goes with it. And I'm going to tuck that cable down underneath the seat. So there's a few more electrical connections I want to add to it. And one of them goes through a bracket. So I've made one here. Stuck it to some brush sheet and cut it out. So in regards to the wires, it's probably one of the last things I want to add. So what I'm going to do is concentrate on this panel here and this one here, which house the mission grips. And on this one here, quite often shown with a documents container. So what I'm going to do with the mission grips here is I'm going to add a few switches and some safety guards. The switch that goes on this handle here and a couple of switches on the back and then they can be added to their mounting brackets. The handles on the mission brake were curved, so I'm just adjusting those with a pair of pliers. So I'm just going to make some switches out of the strip of styrene here. So I've basically got to make four pieces that look like this, and two that look like this. Now over on the right side here, there was a large safety guard over the switch and also just drilling out a small hole for the cable. For the base of the unit, I'm going to be making a mounting bracket and I'm just making this out of some scrap pieces of brass. The mission grip unit, when not in use, was stored on a base panel, which was stored on top of this armor plating here. I'm going to scratch build that panel and the mechanism now. And this is for the pin release mechanism. For the documents container, I've cut a shape here out of brass, and that's going to be the front of the container.
So that's the finished piece there. And on the back I've made a couple of hooks just so I can secure that to the panel. So I'm wanting to add a panel next to the gunner's seat which will hold the mission grip connections and I'm just going to make it out of some brass. The air tube that goes into the back of the gunner's seat is different from the pilot's one. It's a large smooth tube. So for this I've taken some of this wire and taken it out of the insulating tube. And then I was able to add a brass rod into that tube, which has allowed me to bend it in the correct shape. And just before I add that to the model, I'm just going to add on a small collar using some brass and styrene. And now with that tube added, this is where I will conclude the video. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please don't hesitate to let me know. And also subscribe if you haven't already, so you don't miss part two. And please head over to LockedOnArt.com and check out my blog, where I post photos and information regularly. And until next time, thanks very much for watching.